One of the most fundamental and important settings in underwater videography is white balance. Getting your white balance correct is the difference between this and this. And as underwater videographers, we rely heavily on manually white balancing to correctly render colors in often colorless environments. This video is gonna cover the way we set our manual white balance on compact mirrorless Canon R7 and R10 cameras. Canon's menu system is similar across menus, but I just wanna be clear on the models that we're using in this video. Before I start, I need to address auto white balance. Unless you're using very bright video lights, I would stay away from auto white balance. Unlike raw photos, it's near impossible to change your white balance at your computer. Seriously, it can make or break your footage and the camera will be constantly changing the look of your video in the middle of recording. So when you're shooting with sunny, bright, natural light, we recommend using a custom white balance. The first step to white balancing correctly is understanding what it is and how to change it. The purpose of white balancing is to render colors correctly, especially neutral colors like white or gray. By correctly balancing white or gray, the camera can tell how to render other colors on the spectrum. White balance is measured in color temperature or Kelvin, with colors getting cooler as the number gets higher. You'll find preset white balance temperatures in your camera, but for underwater and for the most true to life colors possible, you're gonna wanna manually set your white balance. You can see here the difference between a good and a bad white balance. If your videos are coming out too green or blue, you're gonna to wanna to tweak your white balance setting. To manually set your white balance, the camera needs a picture of something white or gray. I just got back from diving in the Bahamas where the water is crystal clear and the sand is white. So I found it easiest to take a properly exposed photo of the sand at the bottom or simply put my hand in front of the lens. If you can't use your hand or the sand, I found that my buddy's scuba tank works well too. And if you want a fail safe option, you can pick up a set of white balance cards that tether to your system or BCD. All right, so this is how to manually white balance on your camera. For this demo, I'm going to use a Canon R7. If you're in video mode, switch to photo mode. Snap a picture and then go back to video mode. Press the menu button and go to the third page of the first camera icon menu. Your first option will be white balance. Click on that and select the custom white balance option and the icon will look like this. Next, go to the second option, Custom White Balance, and the photo you took earlier should now appear. Press the center button to set the image, and then the center button again to confirm. The camera will then save the information and apply it to your Custom White Balance setting. I know this seems like a lot of steps, but over time it will become muscle memory. Fortunately, Canon's menu stays this in the same place as you leave it. So if you stay on the Custom White Balance option, you can easily re-white balance by switching back to photo mode, taking a quick photo, Pressing menu, okay, okay, okay. Now let's talk about when to white balance. The reality we all know too well is that the density of water consumes all the pretty colors we wanna capture, and we lose the colors the deeper we go. For that reason, you're gonna to wanna to get in the habit of manually white balancing whenever you change depths. Again, it might seem like a lot of work, but the more you do it, the faster you'll get at it. So if you're following a standard dive profile, you'll jump in, descend to your deepest depth, set your white balance, and as you ascend through your dive, change your white balance. A good rule of thumb is if you have to equalize, it's time to white balance. You may also need to set your white balance if the environment changes dramatically, like from sunny to cloudy or vice versa. If you've set white balance deeper and then go to a shallower or sunnier spot, you'll notice that the water towards the surface will start to actually look red. This is a sign that you need to re-white balance. I also find that this can happen if I'm white balancing on an object below me in my shadow, like the sand, and then lifting my camera up to shoot in front of me. You want to white balance in the light that you're using in your final image. With all that being said, manual white balance will have no positive effect below 45 to 60 feet, even in the best conditions. If you're filming at those depths, you're gonna wanna use some bright video lights. Okay, so now we know what white balance is, how to manually set our camera's white balance, and when you should set it while filming underwater. But how do I know if I've manually white balanced correctly? What should I look for in the colors of my image? This can be tough as colors disappear at different depths and it depends on your environment and visibility, but usually a good indicator are skin tones. While everyone's skin tones are different, it's safe to assume that if someone's green or blue, you haven't balanced correctly. However, if you're below 60 feet, then all you're gonna get is green and blue anyways, because at that depth, the colors that naturally appear in any skin tone are gone. If you're above 60 feet where the warm yellows, oranges, and reds still exist, you can check the color of the sand. 
Again, if it looks too green or blue as opposed to more white, then you need to white balance again. Remember, water is dense, so something six feet in front of you isn't going to have as many colors as something directly in front of you. So always white balance off something at a distance of about three feet or less. While modern consumer cameras have made great advancements, video files still store much less information than a raw photo, especially entry-level cameras. So the ability to push the colors and tones of your footage is still possible, but limited when compared to raw photos. I would think of it like a JPEG file. The colors are baked into the image, making it harder to work with. If you're interested in manipulating your footage beyond simple exposure adjustments, you're gonna to wanna to get as close to true to life colors as possible in camera. This way you can easily manipulate individual colors and tones rather than working with an image that's washed out by green or blue and lacks any of the colors to begin with. Manual white balance is so important in underwater video and the last thing you want is your tropical footage to look like a swamp. So save this video, rewatch it, learn how to manually white balance your camera, and get ready for some amazing footage on your next shoot. Thanks for watching and happy diving.